The first thing that uh, I always do when I am giving a presentation like this is uh, to uh, go through my disclaimers. And uh, uh, scientists in the life sciences always do that because if you have money coming from a pharmaceutical company or some other place, you need to tell the audience where your potential biases are. And so these are my potential biases. I have a gay son. We have known that our son uh, is gay since he was 30 years old. So we're coming up to our 10-year reunion of that event. The next thing I need to tell you is this is not my research. What I will be talking about are other people's research. The part that I have done is to go to the library, to go to the primary literature, to try to uh, use my best critical analysis skills to pick out the good studies from the bad studies, put all of those good studies together, and try to make it into a coherent story. And I have spent time uh, doing this critical analysis because there are an awful lot of studies out there that were not well controlled, that were not well done, and yet people continue to use the conclusions from those and it adds to the confusion in the conversation. So what I will be telling you about today are those studies that are sound and that have been confirmed. The next thing that you need to uh, take note of is where some of this information can be found. You should not take my word for it you should be able to go to the literature and read some of those things yourself if you have a need for more detail or you want to um, follow up on this talk with reading for yourself. This is the citation that I think would be most useful for you to start with and that's because it's a very nice review and it brings together all of the historical uh, literature. It was actually published in uh, 2002 uh, by uh, Jerry Mostansky and he's done quite a lot of uh, work since then on the genetics of sexual orientation and I'll be talking about some of his other work as we go along. The whole uh, uh, milieu of literature that I will be talking about today it takes in about uh, I would say 215 to 220 papers trying to put that together uh, to make as I said a coherent story. And the picture was chosen for a reason, and that is I think we do know just the very tip of the iceberg about the information that we're seeking. So these studies that have been done, particularly in the genetic aspects, are very new and things are very active on that front. And we're going to learn a lot more about that uh, in coming years. Now what are the objectives that I have today? Well, one. I think we need to, to review some fundamental biological concepts unless you all just finished your semester in biology. You may not remember some of these things. It may have been uh, a few months or years or maybe even a decade or two since you had a biology class. So I want to go over uh, two or three points just to get us all on the same page. And then, as I said before, I want to go through and provide some of the latest and best biological evidence um, regarding how sexual orientation is determined. That is, uh, if you heard this talk uh, three or four years ago, you're going to see a few new things scattered in there because there are uh, new studies that have been done and new information that has been brought forward. <clears throat> 